NZ News at four, Maloe Lele. Good afternoon, Call Katrina Batten, Aho. The Labour MP, Claire Curran, says she'll stay on in her electorate despite resigning her broadcasting and associate ACC ministerial portfolios. The Dunedin South MP delivered a statement to media this afternoon but refused to answer questions. She thanked the Prime Minister for the opportunity to serve in the coalition government but said she could no longer take the personal toll of the scrutiny surrounding her mistakes. I am, like the rest of you, a human being and I can no longer endure the relentless pressure that I've been under. I've made some mistakes. They weren't deliberate undermining of the political system. But my mistakes have been greatly amplified and the pressure on me has become intolerable. Claire Curran, who's been in the spotlight after she was demoted from Cabinet last month for failing to record meetings properly. She'd been using a personal Gmail account to arrange meetings and crumbled under intense scrutiny in Parliament on Tuesday. Ms Ardern says she's disappointed it's come to Ms Curran giving up her portfolios as she has had something to offer as a minister. The opposition leader, Simon Bridges, says Ms Curran's resignation from her ministerial portfolios has done real damage to the credibility of both the Prime Minister and the government. A man who killed his partner and covered it up, claiming she had run away, will spend at least 11 years behind bars. Corey Jeffries was found guilty at a trial in the High Court in Hamilton in July for murdering 42-year-old Kim Richmond in July 2016. Her body was found in her vehicle submerged in Lake Adapuni, not far from her South Waikato home in June last year, 10 months after she was killed. Jeffries, who was 46, had admitted her manslaughter but denied murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a non-parole period of 11 years by Justice Fitzgerald at the High Court in Hamilton a short time ago. The Prime Minister says investing in tourism, roads and forestry in Gisborne is crucial to building the local economy. The government is spending $150 million from the Provincial Growth Fund on a series of initiatives including $137 million on improving roads, $13 million on tourism projects and $1 million in forestry. Jacinda Ardern says the goal is to create more jobs for locals. Currently only 4% of wood is processed locally. That is why we will also invest $500,000 to recommission and improve the Far East Sawmill site, allowing up to 25% of wood processing to now happen locally. Jacinda Ardern. The search for a humpback whale entangled in ropes in the Bay of Islands has been called off for the day. Three boats and a helicopter have been looking for the whale since this morning after it was spotted yesterday in trouble off Deepwater Cove. The Conservation Department, which is leading the search, and managed to get a specialist rescue team close to the humpback yesterday. The choppy sea conditions made it impossible to cut it free and also made it hard to find today. Doc says it will continue the search tomorrow when the weather's expected to improve. It says the whale has ropes from a clay pot tangled around its mouth, making it impossible for it to feed and it'll be getting weaker. British Airways has revealed a data breach which has led to the theft of personal and financial details of customers involving 380,000 payment cards. The breach affected customers who made bookings between August the 21st and September the 5th. The airline says the stolen data does not include travel or passport details. 
An investigation has been launched and affected customers are being contacted. The police are also involved. A chemical spill this morning led to residents in the Otago town of Milton being evacuated and a nearby school being placed in lockdown. A fire and emergency spokesperson says a fumigant was reported to be leaking from a drum at a property in Chaucer Street at 9.30 this morning. Those living 300 metres downwind of the spill were asked to leave their homes and fire crews moved in to decontaminate the area. They were allowed to return to their homes at lunchtime and the school school was taken out of lockdown. Cordons remain in place at the property concerned and the two neighbouring houses. That's the news. The island nation of Nauru goes to great lengths to keep reporters out and away from the asylum seekers who live in limbo there. This week, Media Watch looks at what happened when our journalists got a rare chance to report from on the ground this week and why many in the media here reckoned it was plain wrong for the Prime Minister to go. It is wrong, eh? It really is wrong to be spending $80,000 on travel for one person. That's Media Watch after nine on Sunday morning with Wallace Chapman here on RNZ National. Met service weather through to midnight tomorrow. Northland, Auckland and Coromandel Peninsula. Fine spells today, but a few showers clearing. Northland and Auckland this afternoon or evening. Fine tomorrow, apart from isolated showers from afternoon. Gisborne, Hawke's Bay, Eastern Bay of Plenty, the eastern ranges of Taupo and Taihepe. Periods of rain heavy at times today with possible thunderstorms about Gisborne and Hawke's Bay. Rain easing to showers tomorrow. Waikato to North Taranaki, the remainder of Bay of Plenty and Taupo, also Taumaranui. Fine, apart from isolated showers in Waikato from midday, from about tomorrow afternoon. South Taranaki to Kapiti Coast, mainly fine, isolated showers about the hills and ranges. Wadadapa and Wellington, cloudy with a few showers. For the South Island, mainly fine, however, areas of cloud about North Canterbury and Fiordland and a few showers about coastal Marlborough and the Chatham Islands, low cloud and rain, strong southeasterlies rising to gale tomorrow. And now the Met Service Mountain forecast through to midnight tomorrow, the North Island, Rokumara to Ruahine Ranges, rain with some heavy falls with thunderstorms possible about Huiaro and Rokumara Ranges. The snow down to about 1,200 metres, rain easing to showers tomorrow. Egmont and Tongariro National Parks, cloudy with isolated showers along the southern slopes, snow above 1400 metres. Tararua Range, cloudy with occasional showers, snow above 1200 metres. The winds, gale or severe gale southeasterlies, easing tomorrow morning and the freezing level about 1500 metres. To the South Island, seaward of Kaikoura Ranges, cloudy with a few showers and remaining mountain areas for the south, Fine, apart from some valley fog tomorrow morning and cloudy periods about Fiordland. The winds light south of Arthur's Pass, strong southeasterlies further north, turning southerly tomorrow. And the freezing level, 2,200 metres in the southwest, sloping to 1,200 metres in the northeast. At 7 past 4 on RNZ National, I'll be back about half past 4 with news headlines and more news and weather in Checkpoint at 5. <laughs> Chapman and for Jim Mora, who's back Monday. Today, Chris Clark, the Executive Director of Global Local and uh, Business Consultant and former ACT MP, uh, Heather Roy. And to come this afternoon, Claire Curran has gone, resigning as a minister this morning, but would she have done better if she had some training in her role? Would all ministers benefit from performance reviews? Uh, text us 2101. What do you think? Plus, we'll discuss the police officers turning, uh, running naked, sorry, running on baked beans, rather because they're struggling to make ends meet and the bus situation in Wellington isn't getting better. So what are officials proposing to do about it? Not to mention the incredible rise in petrol prices. Let us know how much you are paying at the pump. And we'll remember Bert Reynolds' greatest roles. But first, Claire Curran. She jumped before she was pushed, resigning as a government minister. It comes after a terrible few weeks and just this morning Jacinda Ardern rejected the idea she would fire Ms Curran. In a press conference this afternoon, Claire Curran said the pressure on her had become intolerable. Interestingly, when we discuss discussed Claire Curran yesterday, we pondered who would take over her broadcasting role. 
Who would make a good broadcasting minister then? Chris Farfoy, I reckon. He's, he's got the, you know, he's got the experience in that in that area. Lo and behold, Damien was right. Chris Farfoy will take over the portfolio, and Penny Hinare will take over as associate minister uh, for ACC. Uh, Ms. Karen will remain the MP for Dunedin South. So, Heather Roy, are you surprised uh, at all with this? Uh, not really. I think that as the week went on, it became increasingly obvious that um, Claire Curran was under huge pressure. And look, it's just the way Parliament operates. When, you, when the opposition sees a weak minister, they put all resources into doing what they can to destabilise them. And I, see, I think we're seeing the, the result of that. You can't really come back from bad press, can you, Chris? I mean, was there any other option for uh, Ms Curran or the Prime Minister? Not at all. You could see the news was, was turning. You could see that there was a feeding frenzy going on. She was going to have to resign at some stage. I think the wisdom of actually preempting it and, and resigning rather than holding out was to her wisdom. But in some respects, she's got nothing to do with her competency in terms of her ma policy making skills. It's got everything to do with the management of her office. And it's quite interesting. Seldom do politicians actually go on their policy skills making poor decisions. It's usually this kind of thing that gets them. Oh, their expense accounts, their management of the office, their Gmail account and so on. So it's really interesting how this one's played out, but I think she's done the right thing, and in doing that, potentially for the government, lance the story. Remains to be seen. What, what do you make of that, Heather? Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's less around competency of her actually core skills, and uh, it's more about other things that people go. I think it's a mix, but I think Chris mm. has got a point. It's often about the extraneous things. It, it's a lot to do with what the public think, too, or what politicians think the public will, will do, and so if you think back to the Tupi Morgan underpants, they were worth eighty dollars, and that just that that picture in people's minds became an overwhelming reason that that action had to happen. So uh, it's partly about what resonates with the public as well. And certainly, I think in this case, she lost the confidence of the public as well as that all the troubles that she had in her office and at Parliament. Yes. Well, let's go to uh, Peter Dunn uh, on this. Uh, Claire Curran. Couldn't a hacker Mecca fight it? He is under investigation, uh, and despite it not being a great look for the government, it also raises the question: uh, Did they not know what was expected of them? Uh, and we will um, go to Peter Dunn very, very shortly. Um, but I just want to ask you both, um, because Peter raised this: um, most jobs are subject uh, to performance reviews. Um, do you think that ministers and MPs should be, Chris? Well, here's probably better to answer this question because I suspect, Heather, you'd say that every day as a minister was a performance review in the yes. sense that you kind of serve at the pleasure of the, the, the Prime Minister. Yeah, exactly and right. every day your performance is being mm. assessed in the public. What I do love, though, is Keith Holyoke was the one when he was Prime Minister. He got every Cabinet Minister to sign a letter of resignation and left it undated. <laughs> and he just put it on his table whenever there was a problem. That was, seemed a remarkably good way to manage party discipline. Yeah, I think today. Rob Muldoon had the same policy. Yeah. But, but, but is there a point there, um, Heather? I mean, did you get called into an office and have, uh, like, like employees do, have a sort of, uh, this is what you've done badly, what do they call them, three sixes and what have you, this is what you've done poorly, a, a proper uh, a, a employee performance review? Uh, n not in the same way that, you know, we're talking about now. And um, Peter Dunn did make the comment in his article that John Key as Prime Minister required ministers to submit to him at the end of the year a detailed statement of their plans and intentions for the following year and I used to have those conversations with uh, mm. the then, then Prime Minister. So that's, that's planning and, and um, performance review of a type. Um, when you've got coalition governments of course you also have your party leader that you're reporting to as well as the Prime Minister. So you, you, you've got dual things happening uh, if you're part of a smaller party in, in, in government. All right, well, let's go to Peter Dunn, former minister and United Future leader who wrote about this. Uh, Peter, uh, tell us about this idea, and, and could it have saved Claire Curran? Well, look, I think there's a distinction, Wallace, between political review and, if you like, the ministerial functional review. The political review can be done by the politicians, the party leaders, etc., in terms of are you working on achieving our policy outcomes. But... My, my point is that there's no real training or support given to people to perform as ministers. Right. What the job actually entails, how do you go about it? And there's certainly no evaluation of your performance of the role until a crisis occurs. And then either of two things or three things happen. Either you get fired or, if it's not that serious, the Prime Minister's office tends to send in someone like a uh, yeah, firefighter to come in and sort your office out to make it function again 
or ministerial services and parliamentary services leap in to help. But it's all after the event. Uh, so there's got to be a crisis first. There's no sort of review that says, hey, look, Wallace or Peter, you're doing quite a good job in this area. You need more skill in this area. You need to do some training in this area. Like employers might do. So you say, too, in the piece that going for a backbench MP or uh, an MP into a, being a minister, um, it's quite amazing how some